Hello everyone. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at something a little different from the usual kind of games and tutorials that I usually do. We're going to be playing with Virtual Engine Room, which is this neat little program I found when I was poking around on the internet, just kind of getting a feel for the different kinds of simulators that may be available out in the world. Um, I will start by saying this was one of the most difficult simulators that um, it took to be able to get the thing started and be able to handle you know, minor emergency things like that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, this is a free student version. You can actually go online and look up uh, Virtual Engine Room, type in free, and it will give you a couple different options that you can actually check this out with yourself if you want to follow along or something along those lines. But um, we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, it's something you can decide to do on your own. So when you first start, I always like to go ahead and uh, start with a dead ship. You can always start it at sea, but you kind of have different kinds of problems when you get out to start at sea. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start here. So right now we're at blackout. In the real world, I'd be holding a little flashlight right now, kind of looking at my control panels going, oh shoot, what did I do? And um, this is a pretty dangerous condition if we're at sea. And a lot of different reasons for that. And uh, once the alarm starts sounding, they won't stop sounding, as you'll find out in a minute. So um, this simulation is uh, not particularly a set boat, but it is of a seven-cylinder, low-speed uh, marine. Um, you can see that uh, based on our little instruments here, we're capable of about 2,500 kilonewton meters. And we also have a power limit of about 19,000 is considered our continuous rating. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and get some lights on. So what we're going to do to that is we're going to come down to power plant. I'm going to go down to where it says start mode under the EG. This is our emergency generator. I'm going to go ahead and set that to manual. I'm going to go ahead and press this big fat green button. As soon as you do that, all the lights come back on, which is really nice. You can actually scoot over here and turn on the uh, lighting. Oh, sorry. It'll go ahead and kick me off because we don't have enough electricity. Just kidding. So um, once we've done that, we have just enough lighting here to actually see what we're doing as far as getting some basic things working. Our first priority, of course, is to get our two diesel generators open so that we can get some compressed air, so that we can go ahead and uh, get some engine starting, things like that. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of the fuel panel, I scoot up to fuel storage diagram, and then we have this big scary looking window of all of our different fuel tanks. Um, our diesel oil fuel tank is right here, and if you follow it kind of backwards, you can see this is diesel oil intake available. Since we are at the shore right now, we can actually click this button, and it's going to start flooding diesel oil through this handy little filter, and then it's going to come down into the diesel oil deep storage tank. So at the bottom, is it's got its own little valve as well. I'm going to go ahead and open that valve as this starts to fill up. I'm going to scoot over to fuel supply diagram, open up the service tank for the diesel engines, and come over here and start um, kind of jerking on this hand pump right here to fill this sucker up about 90% of the way. Nice. Perfect. Come back over here. Um, you're going to get a lot of alarms when you're first starting this program. Some of the alarms are pretty minor. Other alarms are you know, pretty major, depending on what's going on. Obviously, if it's a big problem, instead of an alarm, you get a siren. So that's usually a pretty good heads up. So the first kind of alarm you're going to get is that you have too much of a specific fluid in a specific spot. Uh, this is a fairly common alarm, and uh, the reason this happens because again, there's safety little features on here to catch if you're actually going to overfill something like that. When you get an alarm, you have two separate buttons. You have one that shuts off the buzzer, and you have one that acknowledges the alarm itself. So um, I didn't overfill, so we're good. We're about 90%. Got some uh, diesel oil going in. Diesel oil is coming through here, and obviously it's going to our two diesel generators. So next thing I'm going to need is some compressed air. So I'm going to come over to my air compressor diagram. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the emergency air compressor, and then open up the accumulator. It's probably a little tank, not really an accumulator, to try to build up about two and a half megapascals of air. I'm just going to get all the humidity out of it real quick. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and plug that into our diesel generators. Another thing our diesel generators is going to need is lubrication oil. We'll click on lubricating, come up to lube oil storage, then you can see we have these three, four tanks. I'm going to go ahead and open them all up equally, then go ahead and uh, get some of the oil from the shore and go ahead and pour that directly into these three tanks themselves. You have to be kind of careful with this because it's really easy to accidentally f overload your sump of your main engine by uh, flooding with too much oil from one of these tanks. Now, one thing that I learned pretty early on is to be really, really cautious between trying to fill something up on one page and then jumping back to the other page and trying to keep track of which one you're filling. It's not an unusual kind of a problem because you start getting warnings, but that's what those alarms are for. That being said, I'm going to scoot over to the cooling page and open up the expansion tank. Then I'm going to scoot down to the steam page. I'm going to go ahead and open up the makeup tank. So now, uh, don't be surprised if an alarm goes off. I'm not always the quickest when it comes to this kind of a thing. 
So we're going to fill these oil tanks up to about 90%, which is a fairly good amount of oil, and it's probably going to last us the entire journey, you know, much longer than our uh, fuel usage will probably be. But that's okay, too. Let's scoot over to cooling real quick. I want to make sure I don't actually overfill the uh, makeup tank. Looks like it's uh, getting a lot closer than I was hoping it would, but uh, we'll be okay. That's good. Perfect. Go ahead and open the diesel generator. I'm going to scoot back as fast as I can. Go ahead and shut that off before the alarm fires. And now I'm in pretty good shape. I'm going to scoot back to steam real fast as well. As you can see, i got about half a tank there. So now I have lubrication oil for my uh, diesel flowing through this valve, which is going through this valve, which is going to my diesel generators. The only thing I'm waiting on now is getting enough air pressure, but you can see I actually do have enough air pressure right now to go ahead and get the system started. Now, if you remember a second ago, I was filling up this particular fuel tank for the um, boiler. Don't want to forget to shut that off before I start getting carried away with starting the two diesels and stuff like that. I'm not going to activate the cooling water for the diesels yet because they're not actually going to work until we get a little bit of electrical flow anyway. There we go. That's a pretty good amount. I'm going to go ahead and open up the refill pump now. I'm going to go ahead and set this on. This fills up pretty quickly, by the way. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Oop, sorry. Just kidding. We need electricity before we can do this. So let's go ahead and get some electricity. So we're going to come down to the power plant here. Uh, we go ahead and switch this to manual. I'm going to switch these two to automatic. Then all you have to do is press the green button. Oh, wait. Just because we've filled up the tanks doesn't actually mean that these are ready to fire. You have to actually connect the sources to them. To do that, we scoot up here to generators. Go ahead and open these two valves, um, four valves, I should say, to the two generators. So I'm going to go ahead and reach over to the big start button. I'm going to go ahead and press it. You can see we get a good start right away. Come over to this one. I'm going to go ahead and start this one as well. Now, a really, really important fact is before we can really load these generators up, we have to provide it with a little bit of water to do so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot over to the seawater diagram. Open up the two outside tanks. Obviously, you want to pick the opening that actually has water. So if the water level's up here, these are good. If the water level's down here, you'd pick those two tanks instead. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot over to the salt water pumps. I'm going to go ahead and turn both of these on just like that. One's going to be on. The other one's going to be on standby. Now that we have cooling water coming to the diesels, it's time to actually activate them. So I'm going to switch to main switchboard. So generator number one. Turn on the uh, stator preheat for the two engines real quick. Then we'll flip this over to auto. To turn on your first generator, all I'm going to do is come down here where it says DG breaker. I'm going to go ahead and press this and hold. Click. Just like that, we are now have electricity. Scoot over to diesel generator number two. Instead of pressing this button, we actually have to synchronize this generator directly to the other generator. If we try to just, you know, turn it on, it's going to have a phase error. So to do that, we go ahead and select this option here. You can see they're pretty out. Of, oh, they're not terribly out of phase. It's like synchro mode auto, and press and hold the green button until this little orange light comes on. We timed that fairly well, so now you can see that we have two generators running. Scooting over to consumers, we might as well go ahead and turn the lights back on. Now we're actually in pretty good shape. So at this point, uh, we need to go ahead and get our other compressors up, because these take forever to go ahead and get charged up. Go ahead and open up the uh, big tanks for those as well. We need an awful lot of air in these two systems in order to actually successfully start our other systems. We actually don't need to fill this one. It's already quite full. We need, uh, like I was saying, quite a bit of compressed air in order to start the main engine. So we got to get this kind of going right away. So while that's going, we're going to go ahead and get our boiler all fired up. Remember a minute ago, we um, weren't able to use this pump. It actually works just fine now, as long as you go ahead and open up that valve. Once this starts pulling water in, I'm going to come down to the two feed pumps. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the burner as well. I'm not going to touch these two circulator pumps because they're not going to do anything for us a lot later. By the way, you'll notice that the water level isn't changing. That's because you have to actually open the valve for the fuel and you have to open the valve for the actual water and then open the valve to provide some place for the steam to go out as well. So uh, keep an eye on this as this fills. You don't want to overfill it. I've done it so many times. Um, by the way, when the boiler first fires, you might get a bunch of alarms because even though this thing is automatically filling, the water is going to expand a little bit. And it's actually going to trigger all sorts of problems. You'll see in a second these two will go out. And don't be surprised as the uh, temperature starts to come up and we start actually building up steam that we've gotten our first error so far today. So again, if I just press and hold buzzer, it leaves the light on. If I press and hold acknowledge, I say, fine, whatever. This is going to start going down in just a moment. Once the uh, steam really, really starts to build up, it's important. Now, unlike, you know, a lot of the other things that I usually operate, steam is really, 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 really critical for the operation of a lot of systems on this ship. Namely, without steam, it's very, very difficult to heat your uh, fuel up, it's difficult to heat your oil up, and it's difficult to move 
uh, liquids around the ship itself. That looks pretty good to me. So we got that going. We got that going. So my next stop is I'm going to come back up to fuel real quick. So um, right now, as it stands, our bunkers are empty and our tanks are empty. And our HFO, this heavy fuel oil storage tanks, are empty. So we're going to go ahead and try to fill these up as equally as we can so you don't throw the whole ship out of ballast. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and open up these three tanks. I'm going to go ahead and open up the HFO deep tank. Open up this guy here. And then open up the one that comes to the fuel filter. So uh, to go ahead and get this rolling, I'm going to go ahead and reach up here and click this button here. And now the fuel's going to come through this, through our filter, down here, and actually start filling up in these guys as well. We want to go ahead and fill up one of the heavy fuel oil tanks. And uh, this is going to be a really, really big point later on, as you would say. So to fill one of these up, I'm going to go ahead and click right here to open this valve. And then these require steam, some heat to actually push the um, oil, fuel, I should say, all the way into this thing right here. Oh, I'm getting a steam warning, not unusual. Not too, too concerned about it. So anyway, like I was saying, we're going to have to actually turn on one of these transfer pumps in order to actually get some fuel all the way up into this HFO tank. And now we just kind of hang out as everything fills up. I'm going to go take a look at what that steam alarm was about. Our hot well seems to be critically hot for some reason. I think I know why. And uh, we're in pretty good shape right now. Okay. Gotta give it a quick squirt. Just to cool that water down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get an alarm. That's fine. Then I'm gonna go ahead and close this pump once again. Okay, so that should get things back under control. We're getting a fuel warning, of course, like I warned earlier. You can't go running around filling things up without paying careful attention to what you're doing. It's the HFO tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off that transfer pump. I'm gonna come back here and kind of pay attention to what's going on with these two as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look here. Good. About a half a tank so far full. While that's going, I'm going to go ahead over my fuel supply diagram, open up the HFO ser uh, service tank, then I'm going to go ahead and fire up these two guys to kind of get something going. So what these guys do is they separate the uh, fuel into its uh, components, kind of clean it out. If you were to just uh, run your fuel through normally, eventually contaminants would have an awful lot to say with the quality of your fuel and end up really, really doing some serious damage. So once those are all on, you're going to notice the HFO tank still is not filling. The reason it isn't filling is because of the fact that we haven't actually made a demand for it at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create that demand by turning on the fuel supply pumps. As soon as do this, what's going to happen is these are going to start working very hard to go ahead and fill up the service tank for this. This also means we can actually flip the boiler over to a different power system. We could actually run on HFO instead of diesel. But uh, we're going to hold off on that for just... Uh, we're just about to the 90% page, which is uh, very important to me. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, this takes a little while to kind of get... In the real world, you know, this could be hours as opposed to you know, just a couple minutes like I'm doing. Oh, looks like we're good. Go ahead and close these off. And now we are good to go. So the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that hot well situation. That is so hot. Go ahead and discharge some of that if I had to. I'm too, too concerned with it at this point. Obviously, some of this is going to start boiling itself off in a bit anyway. But anyway, so let's go ahead and scoot back to uh, this guy right here. Oh, sorry, fuel. All right, so our fuel is in good shape. And uh, you can see we've got enough fuel coming into the actual engine. It's uh, its costed. It's looking pretty good. It's pressure is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and just cruise back to lubrication real quick. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill the cylinder oil. The cylinder oil is basically responsible for lubricating the top half of the engine. The sump is responsible for lubricating the bottom half of the engine. Shut that off real quick before it kind of clicks out at the top. Once that gets going, go ahead and uh, shut that off. Then we're going to go ahead and fill up the sump as well. That's plenty. Make sure, by the way, that you don't forget to open this valve. Otherwise, all this beautiful oil doesn't actually get into the engines, and it gets very, very grumpy. Another thing we're going to do is we're actually going to turn on the, um, the uh, lubrication oil heat. So that's going to make it viscous enough to easily pass around the engine. So, filling up the sump's a little tricky. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to temporarily shut off this tank. Then we're going to go ahead and flip open these tanks, coming down here, following the trath. We're going to have to open up these two tanks. So uh, once you do that, nothing happens. 
got to go ahead and also make sure that you turn on your lube oil pumps. And then go ahead and turn on your two transfer pumps. Once you do that, you'll notice that your sump starts filling very, very quickly. So you really got to keep an eye out for that, that you don't overfill that, because I've done it so many, many, many times. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the two transfer pumps. I'm going to go ahead and shut off these two. And then I'm going to go ahead and shut this, this, and turn this back on. Wow. Whew. That's some fast work. But that's okay. So uh, now we have plenty of sump oil. Plenty of cylinder oil, plenty of CO2. We also have plenty of fuel now that the separators have done their job. Everything's actually looking pretty good at this point. So I'll uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at compressed air. You can see we still don't have enough compressed air to actually start. So um, that's unfortunate, but um, it gives us enough time to kind of get some other things. And besides, the bridge hasn't actually called us up to get anything started yet. I'm going to go to miscellaneous. Go ahead and fire up our steering gear pumps. Steering gear is just a fancy word for rudder control set the to remote operations. That way the people at the bridge can go ahead and decide when they want to turn on the pumps. Or the steering gear, the rudder I should say. So that's good. Other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm actually going to go ahead and start pumping some stuff out of the bilge. Because they're probably accumulating a pretty good of uh, oil and water kind of at the bottom. Kind of my fault. Go ahead and set this to auto. Start these pumps. Now one of the things that makes me crazy about this particular system is that you have to prime these pumps with seawater to get them to work. So the technique I found that works great is you go ahead and click here, then click here, and go like this. So I'm going to open the two seawaters, open the two uh, main pump ones, and then it builds up a pretty good amount of pressure. Then all you have to do is open these valves. If that happens again in the future, you just click the two like this. You can see our bilge water tank is starting to take some water. In this particular system over here, which is designed to kind of go into that and kind of pull all the good usable oil out of it, it isn't really working too, too hard, but you can already see it has 20 centimeters. Now, if you remember earlier, I was saying, hey, we're going to leave one of the HFO tanks empty. The reason why is we need to have a place to put that. And uh, as you can see, I'm already up to 32 centimeters of that. So we can actually go ahead and pump that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one, this one, and this one. Then go ahead and turn on one of the transfer pumps. So if I go back to the bilge diagram, you can see that that nasty stuff that we've accumulated, that's actually good fuel is uh, now dropping down and being loaded into that other tank. Now wait do you see just how much fuel that actually turned out to be. Wow, that's pretty high. So go ahead and shut those off. Shut off my transfer pump. And now I'm going to go ahead and empty the sledge too, because I'm one of those kind of people. Meanwhile, the bridge has just called us up. And they've requested that we go ahead and uh, bring the engine up to slow. So um, it's time to get this thing started. To go ahead and kind of make sure everything's okay. It's sort of my last minute check. Okay, so the supply pumps are good. Cooling, oh, we got a problem. Go ahead and turn on the main engine salt water pumps. Fresh water pumps. Turn on the main engine fuel water heater. We just got a warning because our bilge is probably kind of empty. Going to lubrication, our main engine heater is on. We have plenty of oil. Going down to compressed air, oh, finally. We have enough to actually start the engines. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and open up these two. We use compressed air in order to control our engine and emergency stop it. We also use compressed air to actually go ahead and turn our engine over to start it. So that's looking good, that's looking good, that's looking good. All right, the bridge is requested we do dead slow, so it's going to be pretty kind of slow. Before we just go ahead and crank on the starter, what we want to do is turn the engine. By the way, these are valve covers. We're just lifting them up so that we can hear and see them when they're operating. We'll go ahead and turn my lubricator on to higher also. So um, what's going to happen now, switch the blower on, is we're going to turn the engine over several cycles to go ahead and double check to make sure that everything's moving smoothly. Um, right now it looks like it's turning over at 3 RPM, about 5 RPM, 6 RPM, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stop it now. Now the turning gear just turns everybody over to make sure everybody's moving smoothly. It looks like they are. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, disengage the turning gear and I'm ready to go ahead and get started. So we have enough starting air, we have lubrication, fuel, cooling, everything's ready to go. So all I do is I grab this handle, set it to the start position, and we wait for about 40 RPM. You're going to get a compressed air warning pretty much 100% of the time. Once you get up to 40 RPM, go ahead and bring it like that. Go ahead and press apply like that. So what's going to happen is when this engine first starts, it's going to shake the ship royally. So if you want to avoid that, including this big nasty error message you get at the bottom of the screen, just bring your throttle up to about position 2. As soon as you do that, the engine goes ahead and gets going on its own. So now that we have the thing 
going, I'm going to go ahead and close the valve covers. Getting another warning. It's probably uh, related to the build. That's just kind of what happens with this particular engine. And now we're moving dead slow and everything's fine. I'm going to go over to the power plant real quick. Ah, so we're getting a warning that we have reduced voltage. What? Shaft generator. The shaft generator is the uh, generator that's actually connected to the main shaft that's rotating right now. At the moment, it's not rotating quick enough to actually produce any real amount of anything. So um, we're just going to kind of hold tight until the bridge calls us and gives us at least half. Another thing we could start playing with now is going ahead and set up the steam, uh, as well as um, going ahead and shutting off those two heaters we don't need anymore. Don't need this anymore, we generate our own heat. We don't need the oil heater as well. Now when you shut these two off, assuming the guy is going to want to be uh, going at a constant speed, which I think our command is going to want to, we're going to go ahead and uh, bypass them by clicking this valve here, scooting over to cooling, bypassing the preheater here, because again, it's already 50 degrees Celsius, it's plenty. So uh, now what we have to do is wait for the engine to go, oh, what's this? Oh, they've requested half, that's easy. Half would be about half torque, so that comes out to be about five on this guy. Normally you wouldn't go ahead and jam on it that hard, we you know, spend a good 10-15 minutes to warm it up, but we're good. Some things to watch out for, as our RPM starts to come up, and our torque starts to come up, you'll notice the auxiliary blower light goes out. That's just giving us a quick little heads up to let us know that, oh, okay, Bridge just told us that it's um, they're going to be using full navigation, so now it's going to be safe to bring up the shaft generator. Anyway, so that just tells us that our turbochargers are working. Now, just a quick little kind of thing, if you're interested. Uh, this is the scavenge in. This is roughly our boost pressure, for those of you guys who like racing cars. And what it's telling us at the moment is the fact that we're pushing about just shy of 2 bar, or 0.2 megapascals. This thing pushes an enormous amount. So for those of you who like to do the multiplication, just multiply this by 10 and then uh, by 14.7, or 147 to get an idea just how much this is uh, boosting right now. I'm uh, sorry, that does not make any sense. Uh, multiply by 1.47. Either way, one single megapascal is 147 um, uh, psi. So I guess you guys can figure that out. The fact of the matter is, this thing's pushing pretty hard. So now that we've got that going, we have two things we need to do. We need to engage the shaft generator. Oh, we can use just a little bit more because we're not quite half yet. We've got to engage the shaft generator for electricity, and we need to go ahead and engage the uh, main steam system as well so that we can uh, save some fuel. So I'm going to go to the power plant, click on main switchboard, click on shaft generator, go ahead and turn on the stator, get it all kind of nice and warmed up before we actually engage electricity to it. Switch it to auto like that. Shaft generator is selected, and all i got to do is make sure I'm set to auto, hold the on key. Now what's going to happen is you're going to see this little dot rotating which represents phase. Once it gets up completely in phase, like it just did there, it's going to go ahead and come up. So now we're actually running off the shaft as well as our two generators don't need this much electricity generating. So I'm going to go to diesel generator 2, and I'm actually going to disengage it. So when you take a generator offline, you have to kind of gently take it offline. So I'm actually going to use the auto-synchronizer again to pull it off. So DG2, auto-synchronize, off. And you can see it worked very quickly and popped our diesel generator number 2 off. So now I'm going to scoot over to power plant control panel. Normally you let the diesel shut down and kind of gently cool off, but I'm a cheater, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. After doing that, I'm going to come down to where it says start mode, set that to automatic, and I'm going to go ahead and set standby 2 in case something bad happens, which, you know, with me, almost always does. So this is a good time to go to our steam system, turn on our two circulating pumps, and then actually start um, circulating some of this water out into the exhaust funnel to heat it up, and then back into here so that we can save our steam. By the way, while we're here, we can always click this button to go ahead and flip to using the heavy fuel oil as our source of heat. Or I should say, source of fuel, I should say, for the boiler. It's kind of nice. Scooting back to compressed air real quick. You can see finally we're starting to get caught up. We have a pretty good amount of compressed air throughout the rest of the ship. So now what's going to happen is the bridge is going to call us and tell us they'd like full. Um, our full rating on this thing is something like 19,000 something or other. So um, go ahead and check that in just a sec as it's loading up. There we go. Basic. Oh, let's go back. Engine specification. Main engine. Uh, 19,670 kilowatts. So I'm going to go ahead and push this handle up to about here. You don't want to push it to 10. You'll just make the thing trip and shut down, which is no fun for anybody. And take a look at our power slowly starting to come up. We're producing 140. Don't be surprised if you get a steam alarm anytime soon. 
You tend to get that because uh, now you're producing so much more heat than you were a minute ago, so you tend to create an overpressure. But again, you've got a pretty good system on board to kind of uh, alleviate some of that. You see, we're just about up to redline RPM. Normally, you wouldn't drive an engine this hard, especially if you're trying to save gas. But, you know, just for kind of fun, we're going to go ahead and do something like this. Now, let's go ahead and create an emergency situation. Now that we're underway, actually, before I even do that, I'm going to quickly scoot up fuel because I don't want to be kind of fighting for everything all at the same time. Lubrication, of course, an emergency can come at any time. You never know. Rest air, of course, we checked a minute ago. Bilge, level, I'm happy. So let's go ahead and create an emergency. So we're cruising along, we're cruising, and all of a sudden the bridge calls for stop. If I were to click the stop button, the engine will shut down immediately, which, since we're only on a single diesel generator, is going to cause a lot of problems. So what I'm going to do is fly over to the power plant, set this to manual, start this up, go to the generators, the main switchboard, switch over to diesel generator number two, click right here, go ahead and bring it online like that. And I'm going to go ahead and as soon as it's online, come on, other way, other way, other way, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, it's an emergency. Meanwhile, I'm going to start slowing the engine down just a little bit. Go ahead and close off the uh, two steam connections right here. Here comes the alarms. I'm doing too many things at once, but that's okay. Go back to the power plant. Do we have power? Do we have power? Yes, we do. So now I'm going to take the shaft generator offline, because if you don't, when you kill the engine when by clicking stop, there it goes, you're going to get a thousand alarms. Now, usually when you get an emergency shop, stop like this, rather, that usually is indicative of needing to uh, stop the ship or reverse the ship in a hurry as well. So our bridge has just called us and announced that they'd like us to go full astern as well. Oh no. So now we're going to go have, have to start the ship in a hurry. So we're going to go to compressed air. We're going to go to compressed air diagram. We're going to go ahead and turn that one back on. Back to the main engine. Uh, pretty good. We're going to go ahead and turn on high lubrication. We're not going to turn on any of the cooling or lubricating heaters because we don't need to this time. We're going to go to our turning gear. going to go ahead and give it a couple quick rotations. All right, I'm happy with that. Go ahead and disengage. I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Notice it's going to run forward for a second, and then it's going to snap and start going backwards. There's a compressed air warning as always. I'll ignore that for a second. We're going to go ahead and gauge it up to two, just like we did before. Now, they specifically requested full, so we're going to go ahead and push it all the way. Sorry, Mr. Engine. We're going to go ahead and set the lubrication back to normal. So I'm not going to bring up the shaft generator or anything like that, because there's really no need to, because chances are once the ship gets to a position where it's stopped, we're in pretty good shape. Because I've got the two diesels running right now, I'm not too, too concerned with electricity. If they suddenly call me up and announce this, Jerks. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Now, I have a feeling we're going to be stuck here for a minute or so. So uh, when this particular thing kind of happens, generally you want to run around and get all the units that are required for heating the engine and preparing it to go. But uh, the bridge itself just called me up and said that they were done with the engine, which um, probably means we're going to be stopped for a little while while something goes on. Uh, one other quick thing while I'm at it is I just want to quickly show you the ballast diagram. The notice our ship right now is out of trim. It's at 1.9 meters too far to the back, which makes sense because this is where all our fuel storage is. So the way we solve that is we can actually force salt, uh, seawater directly in to one of these big ballast tanks. Pretty simple process. We simply open up the valves to the side that we want to flood. Then we go ahead and open up these two valves and it starts flooding it as well. You're going to notice as we start adding seawater to the front of the ship, the trim of the ship is going to start going forward. If your ship is healing at all, it simply means you're using fuel more on one side than the other, or you didn't fill everything equally when you did it earlier. I'm going to go ahead and fill that sucker up real quick. About 89, 90, and that's as much as that's going to hold. Go ahead and shut those two ballast pumps off. Uh, naturally, I could fill um, these two slots as well to try to ballast it even more, but I'm not going to do that at the exact moment. What I am going to do, though, is prepare the engine in case they need us again. It looks like the bridge just called for standby. So, chances are whatever was holding us up a minute ago isn't holding us up anymore. It's still pretty hot, but um, I'm going to keep it warm just in case we need it to be. Lube oil, oil, ah, heater goes back on, and the bypass gets shut off. I'm getting a warning from the power plant. Go ahead and see what the power plant warning is. I'm getting an overload warning on diesel generator one and two. Ah, that's why. Alright, power plant. Yep, we're 
quite a bit and we're working very very hard and in an actual emergency we can always shut things off completely if we had to you know shut electricity and stuff like that off but uh, at this moment you know our diesels are working pretty hard to kind of keep the rest of the ship going pretty well so anyway let's get this thing started and underway and then call it a day so at this point i'm going to go to compressed air i'm going to just go ahead and make sure the slow turning valve is open come back to the main engine bridge is going to ask us to go slow ahead knowledge and I'm going to go ahead and get the engine started. Uh, again, we got to make sure we run over to our lubrication settings, set that back to normal. And all we have to do is go ahead and engage our machinery. Oh, getting a fuel warning. Let's go ahead and find out what that's about. Plenty of fuel there. Is anything unusually hot? Nope, we're good. Good, 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 good. All right, I'm happy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and engage the turbo gear. Give it a couple turns forward just to make sure everything's working correctly. good to me. I'm going to go ahead and disengage it and I'm going to go ahead and get started one last time. Again we want to wait till we get to about this little red dot here before we go standing on the gas otherwise we're going to have other issues. Nope, compression rear error as always. Here we go. About one and a half. I'm going to have to let the ship kind of shake itself out real quick. It takes just a minute. up to two. All right, good. All right, let me go ahead and cancel the uh, that system. Shut off our heater as well as bypass it. Shut off our lubricating heater as well as bypass it. Whoops. There we go. Check my sump one. Good. Now we're in pretty good shape. So the bridge has just called us up and says uh, whatever's holding us up is now done. I'm going to go ahead and bring the ship up to head full again. And we're going to go ahead and bring the steam system back online and bring the shaft generator back online as well. As everybody's warming up, take a look to make sure our engine cylinders are temperature. They are. The fuel system seems to be in good shape. Nothing's weird temperature wise. Compressed air, obviously, it's going to be a little low because we started the engine like twice. Be careful with closing these two, by the way, is because um, it makes the engine very grumpy and it tends to shut off on you. You know, basically, this is holding off a fuel valve, and if air gets cut to it, it shuts the fuel valve and shuts you down as well. Which, you know, it's not very much fun. Anyway, that's good. We're going to go back to the shaft generator. Shaft generator. We're going to select shaft generator. The standard preheat was already on. Then we're going to go ahead and auto synchronize once more. Again, until this dot gets complete, which is about 12 o'clock here, notice it's only going clockwise. We're going to go ahead and take uh, diesel generator one offline because we've already given diesel generator two plenty of exercise. And it's offline. So now we can go over to the diesel generator itself. We can go ahead and click the off button. Set this to auto, and it says standby to one. Now we are in great shape. Consumers, of course, we still have all the lights on, all the ventilation, it's pretty comfortable. And we are in good shape. What are we producing right now? We're actually producing more than our rated work power. So um, that's not a good thing, because um, I want to save some fuel. But uh, it takes just a little bit of kind of playing with the throttle to kind of get it to a setting where it's going to work exactly the way you want it to. Uh, there it goes. just takes a second to kind of catch up to you. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully it encourages you guys to run out there and go play with this program yourself. Um, it's a little intimidating, the documentation um, could be better, but for a student version, I'm still kind of impressed, and I'd love to see more stuff like this. Enjoy!